This pair of parents are too cruel. Their son was locked in their room crying his heart out. But they wandered outside the door regardless. He cried for 10 minutes. The mother was a little soft-hearted. She said the child had never cried like this before would not be where the discomfort. Should we go in to pick him up and coax him? But the father's attitude was very firm. From birth Kevin was the more fussy one. His younger siblings could all sleep quietly. But he was the only one crying all night. He needed to be held in his parents' arms to stop. But would wake up as soon as he was put down. By this time, Kevin's crying had not stopped. So Rebecca went into her son's room. Despite Jack's resistance, she was able to put him to sleep. But as soon as she came out, Kevin's crying continued. And Rebecca had to cover her ears. But it wasn't long before she couldn't help herself. I'm out of my way, Jack. Can't do that. <sighs> what we're doing isn't working. Jack didn't want to give up on his work. If he didn't have the heart to coax as soon as he cried, then he will not learn to fall asleep on his own for a long time. In fact, Jack's heart is no less worried than his wife. Hearing Kevin's incessant crying, he hovered outside the door and reached out. Just as he was about to unscrew the doorknob, Kevin's cry subsided. He was relieved and knew his strategy was working. In the blink of an eye, 16 years later, Kevin had grown up and joined the school football team. Jack supported his son by picking him up and dropping him off every day. One day, the coach told him that Kevin was talented but not hardworking. He couldn't even remember the playbook when he was on the field. And when he got home Kevin looked sullen. He didn't like the straight coach and threatened to quit the team. Jack was angry. He told his son, since you've become a part of the team, you can't just quit when you get a little frustrated. Without saying a word, Kevin got up and went upstairs. And Rebecca was very distressed to see how tired her son looked. He's clearly miserable, okay? I'm, I'm gonna go up there and tell him if he doesn't want to play anymore, he doesn't have... She thinks Kevin is still a child. Children should be happy how to come. Jack, however, thinks she is to coddling and allows Kevin to give up whenever he encounters difficulties. Re Just, you can be really easy on him. And it's made him little soft. It's made him soft. Rebecca had nothing to say. But she was still relieved and intended to talk to Kevin. As soon as she gets to the door, she sees Kevin trying to memorize the playbook with the help of his brother. She finally admitted that Jack's approach was the right one. She just didn't have the drive to do it the way he did. Jack, however, told his wife that as a child his father had called him the know-it-all. For a while, he thought it was his father's way of saying yes to him. Then he realized it was sarcasm because he couldn't do anything right. When he escaped from his family of origin, he vowed not to be a man like his father. But our kids, I want them to know their dad sees greatness in them. I will kill myself to make them feel that way. This woman who was pregnant with twins had an accident. While lying in her hospital bed, she unexpectedly waited for her boyfriend's belated proposal. Let's shock the world and get married. We'll live happily ever after all that. Kevin is a big name movie star. His pregnant girlfriend is his sister's best friend. Their relationship came from a mere accident. When he found out Madison was pregnant with twins, Kevin was overwhelmed. Although they were not in a relationship, he quickly realized he had to take responsibility. So he was the first to tell his sister Kate the news. Compared with Kate... Kevin, did you get Madison pregnant? There's more. Oh, look at you. Oh my goodness, congratulations. Brother Randall's attitude is much colder. He and Kevin had just finished a big fight a while ago and hadn't spoken for many days. But Kevin took the initiative to tell him the good news despite the past, hoping he could pass on his parenting experience. Randall said congratulations, but his tone was very distant. The global epidemic and recent events had caused him to drift away from the white family. That day Madison woke up and accidentally hit her stomach. She couldn't feel the fetus moving in her belly and cried out in worry. Kevin didn't dare to delay and drove her to the hospital for a checkup. The doctor couldn't find another heartbeat, which scared the two of them. They were afraid that they would lose a child like this. While waiting for further tests, Kevin tried to reassure Madison. Our babies are going to be fine. We're going to have two beautiful, healthy babies and they're going to be amazing. And we're going to be amazing parents. He promised his girlfriend that he would marry her in a high-profile ceremony when the epidemic was over. Then they would leave happily ever after. In subsequent tests, doctors said it was just a false alarm. Both children had strong heartbeats, and they were relieved. In the days that followed, they were honest with each other about their true selves. Their hearts grew closer and closer as they bonded with each other. But Kevin is a movie star after all. He could not be with Madison all the time, as he was often away, on location. This makes Madison feel a bit lost. And just six weeks before the due date, the most dreadful thing happened. Kevin received a call from Madison one day and learned that she was having contractions and might be in labor. 
Kevin was in another city shooting a movie. He was planning to return to Los Angeles after shooting tomorrow. But he heard Madison's urgent voice, and he knew he couldn't make a mistake like that again. So he chose to walk out of the show and drove to the airport at the risk of breaking his contract. The crew kept calling him on the way, but Kevin was focused on Madison's well-being. After learning that he had arrived safely at the hospital, Kevin immediately contacted the hospital to arrange for a single room. Who knows, he almost caused a car accident when he was distracted. Madison, I'll be there. After the doctor's examination, Madison was sure that she was in labor. She rushed to tell Kevin the news. Kevin was so shocked and happy, he couldn't wait to get to Madison's side. However, just as he was doing his best to get to the airport, he noticed a serious car accident on the road ahead. He hesitated for a moment and decided to get out of the car to take a look. A car was on the side of the road and there was no network signal. Kevin had to go to the rescue. He went to great lengths to rescue the injured man, but accidentally left his identity behind at the scene. On his way to take the injured man to the hospital, Kevin was frustrated that he might not make his flight. This means he will miss the birth of his children and the most important moment in their lives. Instead, the man says he has three adolescent children who remember nothing from before they started kindergarten. This is not the most important day of their lives. You're rich. You're famous. You're gonna be their freaking idol. None of that stuff matters, man. You know, my dad wasn't either of those things. He was just there. Always. Dad was the person Kevin looked up to most in his life, and everything he does now is guided by his dad in the darkness. If dad were alive, he would have saved the man. He would have rushed to the hospital to witness the birth of the baby. In Kevin's eyes, his father was always so omnipotent, as if all difficulties could be solved in front of him. He believed I could be that kind of person too. After taking the man to the hospital, Kevin rushed to the airport. Finally, he arrived at the boarding gate just before takeoff. That's when he realizes it was missing. That man he couldn't make the last flight of the day. By this time, Madison had opened her uterus. The doctor told her the baby would be born any day now. With a poor relationship with her family of origin and Kevin still not arriving, Madison had to face it alone. This feeling of helplessness made her cry. But then Randall called out of the blue and said he had just found out about Kevin. Now he was on his way back to Los Angeles. If there was anything she needed, she could tell him. We just want you to know that we're here. Okay. Or if you want, we can stay on the phone. No, 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 um, I'm fine. You sure? Madison, we really can't stay on with you. For the 20th time, we're not hanging up. We are with you until Kevin gets there. Although they are not blood brothers, and even grew up with each other's dislike and constant conflicts, but when someone is in trouble, family always comes through. This is the Pearson family tradition of all for love. Randall believes that Kevin is doing everything he can to get back. He told Madison to wait for the baby to arrive. To ease her pain, Randall stayed on the phone and coached her. He distracted her and taught her how to breathe. After waiting for the anesthesiologist to administer a painless injection, a long, thick syringe scared Madison. I am Madison, all the way out. Madison, no. Madison, don't look at the needle. Look at me. Okay. Randall had an idea, and he told a funny story about when he and Kevin were kids. He talked with great enthusiasm and even sang his and Kevin's band song with his pentatonic voice. Such a vigorous performance made Madison forget the pain and fear for a while. Just then someone came in. He was Kevin who was stuck at the airport a few hours ago. It turned out that the airport had opened a special channel for him after understanding the situation. So he was able to get here in time. Knowing that Randall had been with Madison for the past few hours, Kevin was very touched. Randall, I don't know what to say, man. It's nothing required, man. I knew you'd make it. Next, he passed the torch of love to Kevin so that he could be with him for this important moment. And after this night of running around, Kevin has become significantly more mature. In the past, he used to be afraid of taking on family responsibilities, afraid of not being a good husband and father like his dad. But now he is no longer hesitant and has decided to take a break from acting to spend more time with his family. When Madison gave birth, Kevin was by her side and held her hand tightly to give him strength. Finally, they were blessed with a pair of adorable twins, and Kevin was the first to tell Randall the news. It was the first time they had an open and honest conversation since their falling out. The joy of the new baby washed away the misunderstandings between them. Kevin said he was scared on the plane. He was afraid of disappointing the one he loved once again. It wasn't until they walked into the hospital room and heard Randall's voice that his heart was relieved. He was grateful that after all that had happened, his brother had chosen to stand by his side to provide assistance when he was at his most helpless. You're my brother. I did say some, some pretty horrible things to you, Randall, and the truth is you are... You're the best person I know. Kevin hopes to talk to Randall 
and untie the knots that have been ignored since childhood. In the future, they will not hurt each other again. Hey, man. If you really want to have that conversation with me, then I cannot wait to have it with you. But now is not the time. Now is the time to celebrate your new family. Yes. The brothers' sincere apologies erased the overnight feud and laughter once again overflowed their call. And in Mendel, Kevin saw a reflection of his father. And now he wanted him to be that person. Because... You're gonna be way better than me. Maybe.